Assalamu alaikum dear students, I am Engineer Abdul Basit and we are in week 15, lecture 30. The topic we are going to cover in this tutorial is a uh, few numericals or, or almost one numerical about uh, the uh, how to calculate seepage through flow net diagram and uplift pressure under the hydraulic structure is a topic that will also be covered here in the this tutorial. Okay, now coming to that first numerical on the uh, calculation of the seepage from the flow net. So a flow net for flow around a single row of sheet pile in a permeable soil layer is shown in figure 8.7. So this is the figure 8.7. Here it is a single sheet pile that is being introduced in a previous soil which is uh, mm, on the hard strata, placed on the hard strata impervious layer okay so this is that sheet pile installed over here and then the given that kx kz and k is equal to 5 multiplied by 10 to power minus 3 centimeter per second so it means that the the hydraulic conductivity in all the directions is the same so the soil is isotropic in nature so all the hydraulic hydraulic conductivity are the properties in all the direction is same so th this is why that kx is equal to kz and so on okay so this is the value cumulative value of all these things determine these three things how high above the ground surface the water will rise if piezometer are placed at a point a and b okay so there are two points that is point a and point b okay so at point a and point b you need to determine the the hydraulic uh, the this that potential head okay so potential head will be equal to uh, 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 the piezometric head at this point and at this point so in this statement it is said that uh, how high the water will rise in the piezometer head okay in piezometer at place uh, when installed at point a and point b okay so this is simply saying us that uh, what is the head of uh, uh, our potential head equipotential line the value of that equipotential line at uh, point A and point B the total rate of the seepage through the permeable layer per unit length okay so this is the total seepage need to be determined okay the approximate average hydraulic gradient at point C so this is the at point C at this point we need to find out the hydraulic gradient as well okay so these th are the three parts they are the three values that needs to be determined for this situation that is given in this diagram okay now coming to the the data that is available to us uh, in figure 8.7 so nd number of potential drop is six how it can be calculated one two three four five six okay so there are six potential drops okay and similarly h1 and h2 also given here it is this is h1 5.6 this is h2 this is 2.2 meter okay so h1 minus h2 is equal to h okay that is determined over here h1 minus h2 is equal to the head difference between the first point and the last point and on the upstream side and the downstream side so this can be also the value now the potential drop the one potential drop can be determined by uh, calculating this value that is h1 minus h2 okay divided by nd okay here it is h1 minus h2 divided by nd so there are six number of drops so the total head loss between the upstream side and the downstream side is now divided by the number of the potential drop so the head loss per potential drop will be equal to 0 0.567 meter okay at point a how to calculate the potential drop at this point so the water in the piezometer will rise to an elevation of how much this is that head at the first point h1 this is that head at the first potential drop okay here it is this is that head at the first point at this point the potential drop will be equal to 5.6 minus potential drop are the head loss per potential drop and that is equal to 0.56 okay so this point a actually uh, is present at the first potential drop here it is okay so that's why this is equal to 5.6 minus 1 multiplied by 
six. So this is the uh, piezometric head at uh, above the ground level in meters at point A. Okay. Now moving towards point B. Okay. So point B here it is from the diagram. It is quite clear. This is point A. This is point B. So how much potential drops needs to be included to to reach to this point B? How it is? This is first potential drop second third fourth and fifth so this is that fifth equipotential line this point is on the fifth equipotential line so here it is that is uh, 5.6 minus five potential head losses or five potential drops okay so this is equal to 2.76 multiplied by uh, in meters above the ground surface this is the piezometer head or the water of the uh, the the word rise in the piezometer okay that will be equal to 2.76 at point B okay this was at point A now moving on to part B okay in part B what is required the total rate of the seepage through the permeable layer per unit length okay so uh, total discharge needs to be determined so here it is uh, already we have discussed in the previous tutorial that is uh, the discharge through this situation in this situation this is square element this is that flow channel of the square element and this is that flow channel of the rectangular element okay so uh, here the total discharge will be equal to uh, this this equation which is 2.38 k h1 minus h2 divided by nd and how this equation is being derived so this is already discussed in the previous tutorial okay so this is uh, 2.3 k is the hydraulic conductivity h1 is the head at the first point uh, at the upstream side this is the head at the downstream side number of potential drops so all the values are given need to be put it on this equation this will be the discharge at point uh, 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 through the channel okay now point c point c says that the average hydraulic gradient at point c so how to determine average hydraulic gradient at point C? First of all, go through that diagram and see whether the, the point C lies uh, in, the, in the flow net. So here it is between the second potential drop, okay, where the length is 4.1 already given, okay, and the width is not given, okay. So uh, here it is, the head loss, okay, this is in the second potential drop so uh, mean the the only head loss is being occurred between the first potential drop which is equal to 1 multiplied by 0 0.56 so this is that head difference between these two points okay and this is that length which is 4.1 meter already given okay so uh, this is 0 0.13 so simple you need to here it is this is point C this is that potential drop occurred between this first potential drop which is uh, 0 0.56 or something okay and this is that length of the element okay uh, in which you need to find out the hydraulic gradient now moving on so this was that last part of this uh, the part C of this numerical already solved now uplift pressure under the hydraulic gradient uh, hydraulic structures once the water seep through the, uh, the uh, uh, below below the area or through the pervious soil below the uh, hydraulic structures so that seepage will cause to produce some uplift pressure or that water that is present in the pervious soil are moving through that pervious soil under the hydraulic structure will act up uh, a pressure and uplift pressure on the hydraulic structure how that uplift pressure can be determined okay so for that we have assumed a simple structure uh, a, a simple situation where the soil is isotropic soil and the mm, hydraulic conductivity in all the direction is equal okay so here is the assumption that kx kz and k all are equal now the pressure diagram uh, on the surface of the hydraulic structure can be determined like okay there are let's say the pressure distribution diagram or the base of the wear obtained from the so here let us consider this diagram first of all okay let me discuss this diagram straight away here it is this is their previous layer this is their impervious layer this is that hydraulic structure of wear for example okay 
this is that head of water above the ground level that is seven okay uh, on the upstream side on the downstream side there is no water present okay and the water level is actually uh, coinciding with that of the level or the surface of the ground okay so actually the head is actually equal to zero at this point with respect to the datum consider the surface of ground so here it is the piezometric head at point a okay so the piezometric head at point a is eight okay so it refers to that potential head at point a now similarly at point b and so on so uh, what is the pressure acting on point a and point b how to calculate it simple very simple pressure head at point a needs to be determined first of all okay and that is equal to pressure head multiplied by gamma is the formula for pressure okay acting on the uh, on the surface of this piezo uh, on this hydraulic structure okay so simple uh, we have uh, upstream side h is given that is uh, h1 is given that is 7 and on the downstream side h2 is equal to 0 so h1 minus h2 the difference in the head on the upstream and downstream side is equal to 7 okay so now count the potential drops 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so there are 7 potential drops so how much of the uh, potential drop are the 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 loss of the head is occurred between one potential drop so there is 7 the total difference okay dividing by the 7 potential drop so 7 divided by 7 will be equal to 1 so 1 is the head loss that occurs between uh, at one potential drop so from this point to this point the head loss occur is like 7 minus 2 minus 1 okay and at the second point this will be equal to 7 minus 1 multiplied by 2 why this 2 is added to it because the level of the wear is much below that surface of the ground okay how much it is uh, down here this is 2 meter so the total head on uh, uh, above this point a will be equal to 2 plus 7 okay so this is 7 plus 2 this is 9 okay so this is the head at this point a now at point a now the loss occur at point a will be equal to minus 1 okay so this is uh, 7 plus 2 is 8 uh, 9 minus 1 8 8 gamma of water this is unit weight of water similarly for the next point let's say I am going to do it for this point B for this point B how to do it 7 plus 2 this is constant for all minus 2 multiplied by 1 why because the potential drops are now 2 this is the first potential drop and this is second now we will move, we reach to the point B for point C the potential drop will be equal to 3 there are 3 potential drops occurred from the upstream side by moving to point C so this is uh, this 1 multiplied by 3 so this is 7 plus 2 minus 3 okay now then this will be equal to for this point B this will be equal to 7 for point C this will be equal to 6 and so on so uh, here is uh, how we have drawn this uh, situation let me uh, make it clear to you by showing you the the exact situation here it is at point a this is that potential uh, that, that pressure uplift pressure acting on at point b this is that potential acting on and at point c and at point d and so on at last uh, f at point f the potential drop uh, the 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 uplift pressure acting on is 3 gamma of water okay so this is diagram was a bit difficult to adjust it on that uh, powerpoint presentation so i did it like this okay uh, i hope you will get it here it is the situation at point b simple at point C now you can think about it on yourself and uh, have a thorough idea of it how it is being calculated okay now uh, in the next class inshallah we will discuss the seepage through an earthen dam on an impervious base so here it is uh, an earthen dam that is being constructed on an impervious base uh, how the seepage occurred through it and how it to be uh, needs to, to be calculated and I hope this will be the last lecture of your uh, course outline as well okay 
and uh, some addition topics will be also be covered so i hope uh, this will be helpful to you as well thank you very much for watching this video assalamu alaikum